As we move into the first week of October, it almost seems as if our hurricane season is just beginning to peak right now. In fact, as you and I speak, Invest 91L is expected to not only form, but many of our future charts show this thing becoming a major hurricane. Some of these early predictions have this thing actually making its way into the Gulf of Mexico, as you can see on these spaghetti charts right here. So what if I told you that at the same time of these large hurricanes forming just recently, is on a direct correlation with the uptick of solar flare activity. And no, my friends, I am not talking about radio blackouts or internet outages. I am quite literally talking about the possibility of our sun actually enhancing hurricane strength. My friends, I got an interesting one for you as we watch a large group of sunspots starting to make its way into Earth facing. We are going to break this all down right here, right now. Let's go. <laughs> back my friends it is October 4th 2022 and it is no secret that the sun has been going pretty crazy lately we've been documenting this for days now as the solar flare activity has been going through the roof specifically in the last two to three days in fact I just posted a YouTube short on this situation when you get a chance please go take a look at that we discussed some of the earthquakes and the relation to them with the sun's activity but there is something else that has also been on a crazy uprise and that is our tropical activity the Atlantic Atlantic Ocean out of nowhere starting to produce large hurricanes late into the season, technically after peak hurricane season. And as we stated in the intro, we are expecting yet another large hurricane to form in the Atlantic Ocean, specifically doing most of its growing within the Caribbean. As you can see right now, a 40% chance of cyclone formation over the next five days, with most, if not all, the models showing this thing becoming a major hurricane. And the reason I say that is this chart right here, Invest 90 91L model intensity guidance. Most of these models have this thing going well above a category three hurricane, which would make it technically a major hurricane. Some of these bringing this into a high grade category four. Our updated spaghetti plots as of 8 a.m. have some of these actually crossing into the Gulf of Mexico. This will depend a lot on our jet stream right around the time when this storm gets about under Jamaica, right in this area here, because that is when the models begin to show this thing hooking north, possibly shooting that gap between Cancun, Mexico and Western Cuba and going right into the warm waters of the Gulf. Now, of course, we are going to track this storm from start to finish, but you are looking at next Wednesday, October 12th. Yes, that is a ways away, plenty of time for change, but watching these charts over the last few days, not much has changed in the form of a major hurricane forming. Now, where it's going to go is another question, but today I want to talk about something else that might be in direct relation to why we're seeing these major hurricanes all of a sudden forming. In doing some of the research for this video, I was actually surprised to find this article. Take a look at this. How a solar flare amped up chaos of Hurricane Irma. Now, right away, looking at this article, you would think, wow, solar flares? Could that be the reason Irma was so strong? But this article in particular talks about how as Irma was growing and approaching the Gulf, we were in a period of high solar activity. In fact, you could see right here, the sun produced an X 9.3 solar flare. That is absolutely huge. We just had an X-class solar flare take place just the day before yesterday. We posted a video on that as well. And also in that video, we talked about the amount of M-class solar flares that took place. Very high-grade M-classes nearly reaching that X-class on their own. And then, of course, we had that big X-class solar flare just as we moved into the 3rd of October. Now, since then, we've still been seeing these M-class solar flares, so a lot of action coming off the sun. So I did a little digging, and I was even more surprised to find this article. Just like Hurricane Irma, major solar flare disrupts Hurricane Ian disaster response. This article in particular goes on to talk about how the solar flare actually caused radio blackouts, which then in turn made the response for Hurricane Ian a lot harder. Now, I don't know if this made mainstream news or not, but if you ask me, that is pretty significant. Not only that, but during Hurricane Fiona, the storm that hit Nova Scotia and was one of the biggest storms to ever hit that area of Canada, also took place during a set of solar flares or high solar activity, which then took a short break only to ramp up again just as we started to deal with Hurricane Ian. 
Now, one thing that's interesting about this situation and that I've learned quite recently is that the research between solar flare activity or high solar activity as a whole has been studied and analyzed to determine whether or not it does influence tropical activity. And believe it or not, for the most part, they actually believe that high frequency of solar flares will actually decrease the ability for tropical cyclones to form. Now, of course, there are always two sides to the coin. What are the chances that during major hurricanes such as Irma, even Hurricane Maria, and now Fiona and Hurricane Ian, which just slammed into the western coast of Florida, all taking place during a period of high solar activity. And not just high solar activity, but specifically during major solar flares, as if these solar flares were possibly adding some sort of energy to these storms or influencing them in some way. Now, I want to be clear, this type of information is semi-new to me, so in no way am I concluding or trying to say without a doubt that this is actually happening. What I'm bringing to you is the data that I have found and noticed by analyzing that data that in fact many of the largest hurricanes we've ever seen whether they made landfall or not went through periods of rapid intensification while we were getting hit by solar wind from large solar flares coming off our sun for many of you I'm sure some of this information may sound absolutely insane but if you actually look into the data it's hard to not see that connection but one thing I am trying to say is I think it's very important as we watch this this group of large sunspots making its way towards Earth facing at the same time that we are now seeing the formation of Invest 91L we should really be aware of whether or not this grouping of sunspots produces solar flares at the same time that we see the possibility of 91L becoming a large hurricane and rapidly intensifying. My friends I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. Questions or concerns please leave down below. Shout out to Canada and I will see you all in the next video. Take care. Bye Bye bye. Stop right there, my friends. If you have not already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Click all and you will get all notifications from this channel. And trust me, you won't be disappointed.